you're you're so nice. That's why you get along with know, everybody. Right? <laughs> I'm getting a toothache just sitting next to you. Who's the gummy bears? It's not. <laughs> Um, have you got a question that's related to publishing? Because I actually wanted to turn the, the, the conversation a bit more in that direction. I sort of. Right. <laughs> uh, There's actually a question I've asked of other writers who've written for publishing before. And the answer I've gotten has always been sort of wishy-washy. It's ne never actual, actually an answer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, uh, me and just about every other writer out there is capable of producing both adult and non-adult content. Um, and I'm always wondering whether it's better, to, which is better to write for the purposes of publication, for the purposes of submission. I mean, it's very clear when you're submitting to an adult anthology, yes. you're going to be writing adult for it. But if you're looking to write something, your, your, your first or your a piece to submit on its own, where is the best place to start? Well, what what you said that you got some wishy-washy responses to that. What it's always a, what fits the story best, what fits the uh, the world the best, and I understand why that answer is usually given. Mm. But you can change the world to to make it fit whichever way works best for the actual publication for the actual submission. Um, I mean, I mean, I can I can make sex a part of the story. I can make it not a part of the story. And I, I think that once once a, a, a writer or maybe an artist or a, or a creator of any kind of, of 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 one of those works gets to the point where they're comfortable with their craft, they can probably do the same thing and make a. Yes. A, so I'm, I'm never really sure which is the best way to go on that one. Can I be blatant here? Sure. Are you trying to do this for a living or trying to make money, or do you have a good job and you do it for fun? I have a good job, I do it for fun. Okay, well, if you have a good job and you do it for fun, do what you prefer to do, because it doesn't matter. Um, you know, if the point is just to just to get yourself out there, do what, if you like writing adult stuff, put out adult stuff. If you like writing, uh, you know, a more mainstream, general, you know, almost anybody can read that this, um, because you want to focus more on the story or for whatever reason, do that. But in general, we're furries. We yep. like adult stuff. If you're trying to do it to, to become a poppy fur or whatever, or to <laughs> whatever they, that's you know, the goal of a lot of people out there, um, or you're trying to do it to make money, adult content is the way to go. Yeah. Personal opinion. No, I think that's a, that's a very fair assessment of the, the market. But when it comes to, to fiction, there are more adult markets out there than non-adult markets. Although, in the furry fandom, we do have a very uh, sharply delineated, uh, sort of demilitarized zone between erotica and non-erotica, right? To the point where um, erotica is such a part of the fandom, and it's, it's everywhere. And sex sells. Porn is fantastic. It's, it's, it's really great fun. Uh, and within our community, we're just very free with it. You know, how many people at work would admit to enjoying, you know, a particular uh, uh, porn studio more than another? You know, we'll talk about the relative merits of Venus and Anubis Dark Desires and, uh, and, and cocktails that uh, uh, was Hot Cider Press are putting out. So, when you have a non-adult market, they really, really want to keep it non-adult. We do that as well with, uh, with Roar. You know, technically, war the uh, the anthology should be fiction that is for um, mature readers who know what they like, and you know it's it's supposed to be literature and sex can be part of literature. But because we want to differentiate Fang and Roar so strongly, and I think it's the same for Soap Wolf Press with uh, with new fables and anthro relations are, are you know they're all ages well they're sort of cleanish and Heat, which is just you know whip it out and slap it down. Um, so there's that strong delineation, and if it's if it's if you're going to go for erotica, then it is mostly going to be porn, or at least that's what people are going to expect. So if it's if it's porn that actually has a good story, um, or you know a romantic aspect to it, or, or whatever, then that's just the that's just cream on top of the donut. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <all right. laughs> let's okay. Let's 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 say move on. Um, but that's, uh, so there you get, uh, uh, um, no, it's not necessarily something that people are expecting 
from an adult market like heat or found they're expecting to be satisfied. Whereas people who buy non-adult markets like anthrolations, uh, and new fables now also. I saw, I saw the books on the, uh, the Blackpool shelf, absolutely beautiful, and our own uh, Roar. They tend to be people who are more averse to porn, or no, I shouldn't say averse to porn, but who have the idea that there should be more to the fandom than just porn. And they're really looking for something that isn't porn, um, but that is still excellent and satisfying. So, to answer your question, which was, what's better? Porn. You're going to sell porn. Yeah. Now, <laughs> at the moment, we, uh, you know, I'm, I'm noticing a bit of a shift in, uh, in buying trends. Roar 2, the, the volume that just came out earlier this year, did really well. Um, I was surprised and impressed by that. Um, honestly, I hadn't expected it to do as well as it did, being that it's an honorific uh, title. And it came out at, uh, I forget which con it came out, but that one kind of knocked me off my sock. So maybe there is a, a new trend emerging. We'll have to see how, uh, how the sales go over the next year. Um, but I think it'd be great if there was a bit more parity between the desire for juice and the desire for, you know, solid storytelling. I think, I think, uh, and, uh, a story with a dull content uh, and uh, good writing can coexist together. It's just people seem afraid to do it because they're like, which market am I selling to? I'm not even certain anymore, but I think that it can be done. Um, and I wish more people would do it. The Kyle Gold's books are a great example of that. Yes, they're it's very, really, I mean, they're really, good story really, yep. really fantastically written and it's got porn, it's got everything I like. <laughs> so, yeah. I know what you mean. And um, so the third book, of Even City, just came out, um, which doesn't have a lot of porn in it. So this was also kind of an experiment. There, it was hard to find a place for it. So what we've now wound up with, when you when you put the three books on the table, the first one is just balls to the wall. I mean, there's 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 blood and guts and action, and, you know, guy stuff. I've talked about that earlier in a different uh, different panel. But yeah, there's like, proper porn in it, not erotica, porn. Um, the second book, there's, there's some of that as well, and by the third book, I mean, there's one straight sex scene and it sort of breezed over and it's really not relevant. Um, and personally, as the, as, the, as the creator, I was kind of nervous about how that would be received, because I'm pretty sure that a lot of the, uh, the sales of the first book initially were because of the draw of the porn. Uh, and that's also one of the reasons why it, was, uh, why it was so heavy on the porn, aside from the fact that I had to like it. I also wanted to, to, to get it sold. But uh, it seems to be holding its own pretty well. So maybe that is part of the uh, part of an emerging trend, which I would absolutely love. I think it can be a hook as well. So you've got the porn and you get your fan base and that, and it's keep writing. Even if that shifts, they're, they're still interested in your work. So yes. I've seen that happen in several contexts. It would be great. Let me check the time before we uh, keep going. Yeah. I think that we're rolling up okay it's a quarter past four um there's uh, there's going to be another panel after this in the nuremberg room which is uh i think purgatory for writers it's past the pool by the toilets where they think that we belong <laughs> so um how about if anyone has one more really cool question let's let's go with that and then we'll wrap this up as soon as you said really cool that was it really? <laughs> <laughs>